Hello and welcome back to the Kingdom Marriage Podcast. We are so happy that you're here with us again today. My name is Judith and I'm here with Ella and we will be discussing today the roles of husband and wives in marriage. So this is an episode that um, we receive like as a suggestion right after the needs because indeed we know what the needs of the husband and the wife and if you have not watched that episode yet i encourage you to go back and watch it right away and also to watch the episode that we did with our wonderful couple shino and jisha as they discuss a little bit what they felt were these needs in their marriage and how they related to that so if you haven't watched that go and watch it right now actually <laughs> and then when you're done you can come back and watch today's episode that will be about the roles so we know the needs now the roles are you excited to talk about this topic today? absolutely <laughs> because i mean the reason why i'm excited about it is when i was researching about the roles from the bible i realized there were a lot of things that mm -hmm. needs to be talked about and it's so nice because when you look at it I was saying that if every husband and wife is able to do exactly this, then we would really have a happily ever after marriage. Wow. Yeah, so I'm so excited. I don't want to just jump into it. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm ready and excited to talk about it. Hallelujah. So before we start, we want to make sure that you have your Bible with you. As you heard, Ella, we're going to be quoting some scripture here. So go get your Bible. Of course, we always show the verse on display, but it's nice to have your Bible to highlight it so that you can just meditate upon it later on throughout the week. But before all this, let's just start with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord God, for this amazing time in your presence. Thank you so much, Lord, for your wisdom. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for your word that you have given us. Thank you, Abba Father, because you did not leave us as orphans here on earth. You did not abandon us, but you gave us your word. That would be our guiding lights, O oh Lord. You gave us your Holy Spirit. That would be our teacher. So we pray, Holy Spirit, have full control of this moment and teach and inspire us, O oh Lord God, as we will be speaking today, that you would teach Ella, that you would teach myself, and that you would teach the audience, O oh Lord God, as you are ministering to us right now we want to grow in you we want to live lives that glorify you so have your way in us in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen, amen. so maybe just like we did for the episode on the needs we started with the husband so as he is the head of the house maybe we also start with the husband so what Absolutely. are the roles of the husband ella well i mean the husband is the head of the home so he has a lot of roles if mm -hmm. i should say but then the the first thing that stands out as you said rightly is the being the head of a family so the husband is the head of the family and so he is the leader of the family mm -hmm. or the home mm -hmm. or the wife mm -hmm. so in the marriage uh, which is a relationship uh, the bible has stated emphatically how it is supposed to be Mm -hmm. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 3, it says that in a marriage relationship, there is authority from Christ to the husband and from the husband to the wife. Mm -hmm. Some verses put it like, this is how the order is. It is the hus Christ is the head of the husband as the husband is the head of the wife. Mm -hmm. So that is how it has been put in the, in the Bible. So indirectly, the man is re reporting to God and the woman is reporting to the, to the husband. Mm -hmm. So that is it. So he leads, the husband leads in the home. That is the number one role of a husband. Mm -hmm. And so when you read um, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 3, and I'll quote from the Message Bible, that says that the husband provides leadership to his wife. Mm -hmm the way christ does his church to his church sorry mm -hmm. not being domineering but by cherishing mm -hmm. so the bible is also teaching wow. us how the leadership should be so when we say the man is the head then we have some women stand up to be no if he's the head then who am i am i the tail or am i mm -hmm. whatever 
but this is what the leadership is about so we compare jesus's leadership or christ's leadership to the husband mm -hmm. so leadership by example right mm -hmm. so christ has laid down the template for us how he led mm -hmm. by cherishing his church and so that the leader who is the husband is supposed to cherish the wife mm -hmm. in a form of leadership so you don't dominate leadership being the head mean doesn't mean you are the boss mm -hmm. or you want to dominate and that leads us to the kind of leadership we are looking at that is the servant kind of leadership mm -hmm. so when you read matthew 20 26 it says that he who wants to be great should serve. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a leader, you have to serve. So the head, when God says the man is the head, it is a responsibility that has been placed on the man to serve his wife. Mm -hmm. So that is how it is. So when you read something, some uh, when you read the scripture from Philippians 2, verse 7, mm -hmm. it says that, but Christ made himself of no reputation in that he took on the servant attitude or he, he became a servant mm -hmm. and came in the likeness of man mm -hmm. we are talking about the death on the cross mm -hmm. and this is the kind of leadership we are talking about that even though he was a son of god he came down to our live to our level mm -hmm. to serve us so that we can be liberated wow. so your service to your wife is to bring freedom to her so if you are a leader and you think that as a man as a leader your attitude is to make your wife feel less of a human being then that is not the christ kind of leadership we are looking at mm -hmm. because christ came down to be like a servant when he sat down with his disciples he washed their feet mm -hmm. Looking at the feet, the feet, I would say, is the dirty part of a man because that is what we use the most. Like, And this is where Christ, a son of God, mm -hmm. to that limit. So that is the kind of leadership we are talking about. You as a husband should model Christ, who is a leader, and learn from him. He has set the example. So your, self, your example is to be a leader who has a heart of a servant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I really like that term that you use servant leader because so many people are fighting for this uh, leadership responsibility and so many people you know like the wife is like why can't i be the leader why can't i mm -hmm. but if we understand that the leadership we're talking about mm -hmm. is servant leader mm -hmm. then yeah immediately people start realizing ah oh, a leader who washes people's feet mm -hmm. a leader who you mm -hmm. know puts his life down mm -hmm. for others that's uh, the kind of leadership that maybe might be a bit less popular so i really <laughs> like the <laughs> emphasis exactly. that you put it's not just leader as we see in the world mm -hmm. now but it's a servant leader yeah, exactly mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah and so I, I, it's funny how husbands now the 21st century kind of husband would be ordering people around that, no that's not how it's about <laughs> yeah you have to be a servant leader mm -hmm. or a leader servant kind mm -hmm. of yeah. mm -hmm. amen and so another role that we obviously know from a, a husband is that he has to love his wife right the bible tells us in ephesians it says husbands love your wife so that is definitely a role that we should talk about for husbands absolutely you just don't love your wife mm -hmm. you love your wife unconditionally mm -hmm. so that is the point we are not as christians if you are a christian man who is aspiring to be a husband or if you are a christian husband the bible said we should love our wives unconditionally so it is not just about loving your wife no it shouldn't come with conditions. I am loving her because, I'm loving her because, when I was explaining the leadership, I gave Christ as an example, that the leader follows Christ. Mm -hmm. So the point is that, whatever that you are doing in a kingdom marriage, you are following a model, or a pattern that has already been laid. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? So that is what um, is stated in the Bible. And as you quoted Ephesians chapter five, Clearly, I also quote Ephesians 5, 25 to 28. That gives a message to the husband. Mm. So he said that husbands, I'll read the message Bible. I love the message Bible because it breaks it down for you to understand. There's no argument about it. Mm. 
So this is what the message says, trying to explain the role of a husband. Husband, go all out in your love for your wife. Wow. All out, <laughs> unconditional, without limits, without hesitation, without mm -hmm. barriers. Exactly as Christ did for the church. So whatever that you are doing, you are doing it. How did Christ do it? Let me do it like that. Mm. Now, it further goes back to say that a love marked with giving. Christ loved us, he gave. Mm -hmm. If you're a husband, you love your wife, you give. Mm. Now, not getting Christ's love makes the church whole. So your love is supposed to make your wife whole. If you are giving a love to your wife, that is not making her feel whole, huh, complete. If your wife is lacking that completeness out of the love, then you are, love, you are not loving as Christ wants you to love. Mm -hmm. Now, he said his words evoke beauty, her beauty, the words. Wow. Now, anybody who has watched the needs of a husband and a wife would see everything I am talking about here. I talk about giving, mm. the five needs of a woman, or what a woman needs, and the five love languages. Mm -hmm. Now let's try to pick it out from this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about words of affirmation now. Mm. So your words, your words bring out her beauty. Mm -hmm. His words evoke. We have talked about giving, which is a love language as mm -hmm. well. So we have the love language of giving, we have the love language of words of affirmation. And this is what, I'm not talking about what a book or research that has been done. I'm talking about the Bible. This mm -hmm. is the Bible. So your words, you have to love your wife with your words as a husband. Don't be mean with your words. Mm -hmm. Don't be harsh with your words. Don't pull your, hus your wife down with your words. So his words evoke her beauty. Your words should make your wife glow. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Everything he does and say is designed to bring out the best in her. Wow. That is a cultivator. If you are not able to bring out the best, everything you do or say, your words, your action, everything is supposed to bring out the best mm -hmm. in her. So you don't compete with your wife. You bring out the best in her. Mm -hmm. And that is who a husband is. Now, he said his everything brings out the best in her, dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. Mm. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They, they are really doing themselves a favor. Interesting. Since they are already <laughs> one in marriage. Uh, so it comes back to the same point that we had the last uh -huh. night. So if you see your, your spouse as yourself, this is how you're supposed to love her. Mm. This is your role, loving unconditionally. So if you don't know how to love your wife unconditionally, go and read Ephesians chapter 5, 25 to 28 in the message version. Mm -hmm. And you see exactly mm. what you are supposed to do. Wow. Yeah. It's really beautiful how, how it's, it's put out. And the message version indeed mm. has this way of, you know, extracting the message mm. and making it plain and clear, mm. like you said. But I like how you describe indeed the husband as a cultivator because then the woman is like his field mm. and he is supposed to take care of it. He's mm. supposed to, like you said, bring out the best out of it. Mm. And it's important that we emphasize on this role of the husband as a cultivator because a lot of husbands, sometimes they can complain, oh, my wife is not this, my wife is not that. But if you see your role as a cultivator and your wife as like your garden, then you see that if there is anything lacking, then let me bring it out. Let me be the one to put the seed mm. and I will see it. If I want a garden with roses, I will not stand in front of my garden and be complaining mm -hmm. that there are no roses mm -hmm. because I didn't plant exactly. any. So I will plant roses. I will clear the weed that mm. is trying to grow and so on. So I really like how you, you put that into perspective. Mm. Mm. Thank you. So husbands out there, we hope you understand your role here as a cultivator yeah mm. and interestingly we have some argument that is going on that says that yeah we have some people who are abusing their wives but they love them they still love them it's not like because they are abusing them they don't love them now what is the scripture saying about that 
I told you the scripture is complete, right? Mm-hmm. It gives answers to everything. So I want you to read something from Ephesians 5, 29 to 33 in the message version. Mm. So that it wouldn't be like, I am quoting it. But what is the scripture saying about that? Amen. So it says, no one abuses his own body, does he? No, he feeds and pampers it. That's how Christ treats us, the church, since we are part of his body. And this is why a man leaves father and mother and cherishes his wife. No longer two, they become one flesh. This is a huge mystery, and I don't pretend to understand it all. What is clearest to me is the way Christ treats the church. And this provides a good picture of how each husband is to treat his wife, loving himself in loving her, and how each wife is to honor her husband. Exactly. So that is the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Now, can abuse be justified as a form of love? No. No. Because nobody would abuse himself. Mm -hmm. Nobody would hurt himself. So... If the Bible is saying that everybody would want to feed and pamper themselves, that is how you are supposed to treat your wife. Then you have to understand that if you are treating your spouse in any other way, then that is not what Christ said. Mm -hmm. That is contrary to the word of God. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how Christ treats the church is how you are supposed to treat your wife. Amen. Amen. And I just want us to just come back to this loving part mm. because now we see, like you said, the way that Christ is treating his church mm. is how we should, it's like how husbands mm. should treat their wives. Mm. But then we talk a lot about love, 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 but what does it mean concretely? Is it romancing her? Mm. Is it saying nice words? Like, what does it mean to love as Christ loved the church? I mean, when we read the Ephesians, it talked about affirming with your words Mm -hmm. like affirming talking about her beauty saying it but then one thing that we have to know is that in first john chapter 3 verses 18 it states emphatically what we have to do if we love he Mm -hmm. says dear children let's not merely say that we love each other let's not just use words of affirmation let's just not declare oh you are beautiful i love you no let us show the truth by our actions Mm -hmm. So yes, what you are saying, you back it with your actions. Mm. Love is an action word. Mm. It is a doing word. It is a verb. It is not a noun. Mm. You do it. You act it. If you love me, obey my command. Mm -hmm. If you love me, spend on me. If you love me, treat me good. If you love me, don't abuse me. If you love me. So that's how love is. Mm -hmm. You don't just tell people you love them, but then... You would act it out. That is what the word of God said in 1 John 3, 18. The scripture says it clearly. Don't just say it with mere words, Mm -hmm. but then act it. So love is an action word, Mm -hmm. and you need to love it out. Let your wife see that you love, Mm -hmm. feel that you love. Mm -hmm. Um, It it just reminds me a little bit (laughs) of uh, one of the previous episodes that we did when we were talking about waiting and abstaining and we talked about how christians need to love themselves because the bible says love your neighbor as yourself so first you start by loving yourself and that's when you're able to love your neighbor and that's also when you're able to know what love is because in our current society there are so many people who are in abusive relationships and feel like it is the standard I, they would be, uh, I've heard so many times people say, oh, you know, I'm with my husband and he cheats on me, but you know, all men cheat. So (laughs) because we have normalized Mm. abusive Mm. relationships, we have normalized. And I feel like it's time for us to return to what love really is. Like you said, love is a verb. Mm. It's not just in him saying he loves you, but the actions that he is performing should also align with that work. So we cannot state it enough that uh, we need to normalize the kingdom standard of what love truly is and depart from what the word is telling us that you can cheat and, on someone and still love them. Yeah. You can be in a polyamorous relationship mm-hmm. and still, you know, all these things. Yeah. Mm. And it's beautiful. Like sometimes when you say such things, I think the question you should ask the person is that, would you want to cheat on yourself? Mm. Would you, do you think you would want to cheat yourself? Like, 
would you do that to yourself mm. if you have if you if you have to choose between yourself and the other person would you choose the other person than yourself if the answer is no then you can't choose another person over your partner and still think it's okay mm. love prioritizes if your partner cannot prioritize you if your husband cannot prioritize you then there is a problem because mm -hmm. God prioritized us. That is why he sent his son to come. Mm -hmm. So love makes priorities. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And in loving the person, like um, you were explaining earlier, if we truly see, if a husband truly sees his wife as this garden, as this vineyard, then he will instead treat her like something precious, mm. even in his way of mm. loving her. Mm. She will not be a burden or a bushy garden. Mm. She will be an opportunity or something that he values and he's eager to work on. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Yeah, and that that is beautiful because as you said rightly, if you see it as a garden that God has given you, mm. then you would want to actually turn that garden. You would want to actually cultivate the garden. So you have to see your wife as God's gift to you. Mm. If you see your wife as god has given me a gift the same way god will give you a car and you want to cherish the car not even god if a friend even dashes you a car <laughs> car is even too big if your friend dashes you a mobile phone i know someone who is obsessed with an iphone like <laughs> doesn't see any phone apart from iphone if that person receives an iphone right now mm. you can know the joy how they'll mm. cherish that phone if you see your spouse or your wife as a gift from God to you, then you treat her right. So husbands are supposed to treat their wives that is God-given gift to them, so sacred, protected, and then guard it and make sure they bring out the best in them. So you have to love your wife because he's God gives to you. Wow, yeah. amen. Yeah. Mm. And also another aspect that I feel like was highlighted when uh, you were reading mm. the passage about how Christ loves the church. Mm. The first thing that we think about Christ is his sacrifice, mm -hmm. is the fact that he died. Mm. So, of course, in the way that husbands should love their wives, there should also be an aspect of, am I really ready to die for this person? Absolutely. Am I doing that? Absolutely. Mm. And that is the key of marriage. Mm. As a leader... Who has taken up the leadership rule as you walk about to say that i am the head i am the head you have to understand that being the head comes with a lot of sacrifices mm. the bible said that you will love your wife and sacrifice yourself to him even unto death wow as christ did mm. for the church mm. so if we have some people who who can't even sacrifice their um, how do you call it their hobbies <laughs> for their spouse mm -hmm. would you be able to sacrifice that football match because your wife meets you in, in the house mm. would you be able to sacrifice that kind of thing that you are doing for your wife you don't need a, a huge reason your wife shouldn't give you like 33 reasons why you need to do this no love sacrifices and the head of the fam the family or the head of the wife is supposed to sacrifice because you are supposed to be the reflection of christ in the home mm -hmm. so when the wife sees the husband they are supposed to see christ mm -hmm. directly with no two ways about that the moment we see you your action your talking your attitude everything should reflect christ let us see that oh yeah christ is here wow yes mm -hmm. so as christ sacrificed himself for the church even unto death so is the husband supposed to sacrifice themselves for their wives even unto death mm. so it's a huge price that you're supposed to pay it's not just about working about and boasting that you are the head <laughs> but there is a huge price that you're supposed to pay mm -hmm. as the husband mm. yeah. i really like the practical examples mm. you use because so many people are ready to say yes i can die for you i can mm. take a bullet for you mm. i can mm. take you to the moon i can do this for you mm. But you're not able to sacrifice a football match exactly. to spend time with your wife. Mm. You're not able to sacrifice money you save mm. to buy mm. the latest mm. iPhone mm. to bring your wife on mm. vacation mm. that you know she needs mm -hmm. or send her off to spend some mm. time with her friends, some alone time, take care of the kids. You know, in little 
daily actions, doing the dishes, cleaning the table mm -hmm. after work, cooking a nice meal for mm -hmm. her. So I really like the fact that you, you broke it down for us. It's not, we're not asking you to jump in front of a bullet for her. Of course, you'll have to do that, but it doesn't happen yeah. uh, exactly. every single week, you know. Happen, <laughs> you should do you that. Should do it. Yeah. <laughs> but in the everyday, uh, there is this sacrifice that your wife will see and your wife will appreciate. And Absolutely. that is the role that you have to play mm. according to Christ. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Mm. That is it. So, yeah, you have to stand in the gap any time, any day. Mm. And I think one thing that also stands out is that we always talk about respect. Why is respect your husband? My wife doesn't respect me. But a husband is supposed to respect his wife equally. So in Galatians chapter uh, 3 verses 28, it's talking about how we are all equal in Christ. Mm -hmm. He said in Christ there's no Jew and no, and no Jew. We have no free and no slave. We have no female and we have no male. We are all equal in Christ. So you respect your wife as an equal partner in Christ. Mm -hmm. Someone that you are the same at power with no hierarchy as i've said even the leadership you have is a servant kind of leadership so you have to respect your wife don't say my wife doesn't respect me but you will call her by any name hey come <laughs> hey sit down hey do this like ordering your wife around and everything some people talk to their wives any way disrespectfully even in the presence of their kids wow no the bible said we are all equal in christ so in as much as you expect your wife to respect you, you have to also respect your wife. Mm -hmm. he, she needs to be respected. Respect actually is a virtue mm -hmm. and everybody needs it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is the, the other point that I want to say that the husband needs to respect mm -hmm. his wife. And it's, it's really sad that, you know, in certain families, the husband will understand that he's a leader. Mm -hmm. But then, like you said, there is no respect for the wife in the sense that the wife is treated like one additional mm. kid, exactly. pretty much. Exactly. So the wife is not seen as a helper. The wife is not seen as the bone of the... The wife is not seen as the husband being one with the wife. Mm. Because I feel like when you start understanding it in that perspective, of course it's natural. Mm. When you start realizing you are to treat your wife as yourself, mm -hmm. as your own body, mm -hmm. of course you respect yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not going to belittle yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not going to drag yourself around. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what should be done yeah, with absolutely. wives as well. And one problem is that I think culture plays a huge role in this. A lot of culture make us feel that the wife is one of the man's properties that they have acquired. Mm. So the moment you get married to a woman, you feel that, yeah, I can do anything with a person, especially when it comes to the case where we have to pay by price mm. and everything. You think it's one of the properties you've acquired. <laughs> but biblically, the wife was not taken at the back of the husband. He was, she was not taken from the front of the husband, but by the side mm. of the husband. And that is why the, the God, God took a rib out of the, the man's uh, ribs, mm -hmm. the body. So the wife is supposed to be beside you, not in front of you and not behind you. Mm. And that is why you are equal mate mm. by your side, a compliment for you. So if you see your wife to be by your side, you don't treat her anyhow. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And um, I believe as well that there is an aspect of honor that should be given to the wife. Mm. As a husband, mm. you should also honor your wife because mm. it's a bit like respect. It's one of these things where we discuss a lot uh, from the man's perspective receiving it mm. and not enough of him giving. Mm. So can you elaborate more on that? Res honor... <laughs> honor, honor of your wife is something that is very critical that a lot of husbands don't even know is very critical. Mm. Did you know that the Bible said that if you don't honor your wife, your prayers wouldn't even be answered? Wow. So let's read something from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7 mm. from the Message Bible. Mm -hmm. It says, in the same way, 
You husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you, but she is your equal partner mm. in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should, so your prayers will not be hindered. Mm. So if there is a home that a husband is praying and the, the, the answer is not coming, Check your wife. <laughs> she's holding on to the answer. And the reason why she's holding on to the answer is because of how you treat her. Mm. God respects marriage. It's a union that God's hand is on it. So if you don't want your prayers to be hindered, check how you honor your wife. Mm. If your, your wife is bitter, if your wife is not happy, if your wife is not content, your prayers might be hindered. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of prayers that are unanswered, not because God doesn't want to answer, but because your wife is holding on to the mm -hmm. answer. Make peace with your wife, and God will hear your prayer. <laughs> Simple. You know, it reminds me of a conversation that we had uh, offset mm -hmm. uh, about how when we read the Bible, it seems that women are really favored by God a lot. Mm -hmm. And it just <laughs> makes me think about it. Like you can be in a home with your husband, but because you're not treating your woman right, it's not even that she's going to complain to God no. or so, but just God looks and he's like, nah, nah, no. nah, 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 no. my princess, you know, exactly. she deserves exactly. better exactly. and everything. But yeah, yeah so and keep that in mind how we say we always are quick to say women are the weaker version women are weak women are but when we read we end there <laughs> and never talk about how your prayers will be hindered when you don't treat the weaker mm -hmm. vessel right mm. so the next time you are quoting the scripture women are the weaker <laughs> vessel understand that in as much as you acknowledge that they are the weaker vessel they are precious in the sight of god mm. and they carry your answers amen yeah amen well, there's a role as well that, of course, we are going to talk about because we know that men are supposed to be the providers of the house. This one, I, I guess people even expected it to be amongst the first things that you mentioned, but can we maybe talk about that? Absolutely. Yes, we can talk about that. And that is very important as well. The Bible has, an, if you are not reading your Bible, please go and read the Bible because it has a lot of answers. And this, I wouldn't talk much about it. Let's go straight to 1 Timothy 5, 8. And I want you to read it for me. Mm. On 1 Timothy 5, 8, it will give us an answer to the provision of for your home as a mm. husband. So the word of God says, but if anyone does not provide for his own and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. <laughs> Do I need to explain further? <laughs> Thank no. you, Derek. So if you are a man, the head of a home, and you are not providing for your mm. home, as you are supposed to. We have people who are very rich, mm. but intentionally starve their wives. Huh? We have people who are very well to do. They'll rather give it to a side chick, they'll mm. give it to a family member, they'll do it. The Bible said, if you don't provide for you, your household, mm. enough of the pretense in Christianity where we want other people to see that we are good, but not our home. Mm. Our children are starving, our wife is starving. But we are very generous outside. Mm. The Bible says start from your household. Mm. Because if you don't treat your wife well, if you don't provide for your wife, you've denied the faith. All the things that you are doing, all the things that the Shakara you are doing, that oh, me, I'm a Christian, you have branded yourself as a Christian, as a man of God, as whatever. You have already denied the faith by not providing for your home. Mm. We don't need to know. Like we don't. The Bible didn't say that when people find out that you're not providing for your... That's not what the scripture said, right? Mm -hmm. You read it. So, yeah. Did it say that if people find out that you're not providing for your home, you have denied the faith? No. So people don't even need to find out that you're not... God knows. Mm -hmm. And the moment God knows that you're not providing, it means you've denied the faith. And an unbeliever is better off than you. Oh. So, yeah, that is provision. And I wouldn't really elaborate much. I mean... Mm -hmm. It's clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. I really like um, how we're just going through the scripture because 
like it's not our reasoning mm. it's not our opinion mm. it's not something that we think might sound good but it is what the word of god says mm. and it's so beautiful to see that god is a god of details he's not only gonna give instructions on how to worship him in the temple of how the church service should be and fellowship but even in the details he wants us to live lives that glorify mm. him we're not supposed to come and pretend on sunday service and be the worship leader and be the preacher but when back at home your wife your kids and the people living in your household are pretty much starving and are being mistreated yeah, exactly mm. absolutely and that is funny because when you do that then I ask that, then your role as a spiritual head, how do you play it? Mm. Because you are supposed to be the spiritual head of your home. You are supposed to keep the presence of God in the home. Mm. Adam was always in the presence of God in the Garden of Eden, mm. right? So the, the role of a husband, the moment Adam left the presence of God, we saw what happened. Mm. This is how it ended us. So... If you are the head of the family, you have a role as a spiritual head. You are the one who is supposed to lead the home. It doesn't necessarily mean that if uh, your husband is not leading the prayer in the house or the devotion in the house, the wife can't. No, that's not what I am saying. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that you have the grace, the capacity, the role as a spiritual head. And so you have to make sure that the presence of the Lord is always active in your home mm -hmm. by not leaving the presence of the lord mm -hmm. so if you are single and you are praying for a man ask for a man who loves to be in the presence of the lord because that is the number one role that a, a wife needs a husband to provide mm -hmm. and so it comes back if you are not providing and you've denied the faith if you are not doing the things that you are supposed to do and you are not honoring me, and your prayer is hindered, then where is the presence of God in our home? Mm -hmm. So as a family, there is an altar that is supposed to be built in your home. And if the altar is there, the husband has the grace and the capacity to bring the presence of God every time and be in the presence of God every time there. And that's your role as a spiritual head, mm -hmm. as a husband in the home. Amen. Which again comes back to something that we discussed in the, the previous podcast about compatibility. Mm -hmm. The first type of compatibility is spiritual compatibility mm -hmm. because you want to be able to find a partner mm -hmm. who loves the presence of God. Like you said, he's a spiritual head, not because he will tell you, you go and pray, no. but because he dwells mm. in the presence of the Lord mm. himself. Yeah. So he will not have to tell his household, you'll be praying, you'll be praying. Mm. They will just follow what they see him Absolutely. naturally doing. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And as we are in the Garden of Eden, then let me just quickly talk about the husband being a cultivator. Mm. Now, when he was in the presence of the Lord, God gave him something to do. So when you dwell in the presence of the Lord, you have something to do. Mm. If your husband doesn't have anything to do, as in a handiwork, something that would help to provide for the home, check if he's dwelling in the presence of God. Mm. Because even before Eve came in the scene, God gave him something to do. Mm -hmm. So he is a cultivator. He, has, he is a provider. So the Lord himself, if he's dwelling in his presence, he will give him something to do. That is the first thing. He's a cultivator. Now, Genesis in the Amplified Classic Version. I am very specific with the <laughs> versions because it brings out the beauty of what I want to say. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Aden to do what? To tend the garden, to guard the garden, and to keep it. Um. And that is the role of a husband to your wife. Mm. You are supposed to guard her, tend her, bring out the best out of her, make her fruitful, and keep her. Mm. So if you are not a keeper, learn how to be a keeper as a husband. Mm. Amen. Husband, keep. That is it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I think it also is very interesting how, you know, the Bible always compares Christ with Adam, right? Even calling Jesus Christ the second Adam. So it's really nice this little allegory where we can see what where Adam messed up 
and we can see how Christ did it with the church. Mm -hmm. So I think even in your personal um, Bible study time, like always take a look when you're trying to understand the roles, especially of the husband towards the wife, look a little bit at what Christ is doing for the church, but also look at what the first Adam did, the one who failed, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and how he treated Eve. And make sure that you're not doing it make sure you're not blaming her for the fault accusing exactly. her for eating mm -hmm. the fruit and so on but taking charge being the lead being the servant and mm -hmm. so on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and that would also still in the garden of eden mm -hmm. i would want to talk about how god said and so a man would leave his father and mother mm -hmm. and cleave leaving and cleaving back here if you've not watched it go and watch it but this time round, i'll talk about the cleaving part mm -hmm. so the Hebrew version of cleaving or the meaning of cleaving is to chase. Mm. Now, the man would leave his father and mother and chase his wife, not his girlfriend, not his fiance, his wife. Mm. So chasing even starts after marriage. Wow. So your, your role as a husband is to chase your wife. Mm. Now that part, when I get to the wife, I'll talk about what the wife is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But then the husband's duty is supposed to chase, keep on chasing after her. Chase your wife. Keep on chasing. Because you have left and your only duty you are going to do, keep an eye on your wife. Chase her, not looking anywhere but your wife. Mm -hmm. So it means that if you cultivate her, make her chaseable. That you chase mm -hmm. her. However you want your wife to be, however you want her to look like, so that you can keep on chasing her, <laughs> groom her to be that woman. Mm. See your wife as that girl that you met her the last time, every time. If there is something that is falling off, maybe she was dressing the way you like it. Now she's not dressing that way. If there is money that's supposed to be given to her to go back and be buying the things that you were loving, mm. Give it to her. Mm -hmm. Make her chaseable. Be that cultivator. Keep her in that shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it doesn't really end there. You have to cultivate your kids also. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Bible said, train up your child the way he should go. So as a cultivator, you have a responsibility to train your children. Mm -hmm. Train as a father. You can't leave your child anyway. Now, the Amplified Classic Version said in Proverbs 22, 6, that you train up the child the way he should go and in keeping with his individual gifts, their individual gifts, what God has given them, you nurture it. So as a father, as a husband, nurture, bring out the best out of your kids. Mm. That is your first vine, your wife and your kids, mm. so that when they go, they will not depart from it. Mm. Make sure that you grow your wife to be that virtuous woman. We have some people in marriages, husbands, who, whose ego are so great that they don't want their wife to be more than they are. <laughs> but a virtuous woman that thinks that Proverbs 31 said, Proverbs 31 chapter 10, verses 10, sorry, said about the virtuous woman, there were a lot of things, she was doing a lot of things that the husband wasn't even doing. And everything that he was doing was to bring glory back to the husband. The Bible said when his hu her, her husband gets to the midst of his rent in the town, they praised him because his wife was well-to-do. Mm, yeah. So as a husband, promote the interest of your wife so that the glory will come back to you. <laughs> Please do you understand. Mm -hmm. So that is the, the basis. You are supposed to groom that virtuous woman that you want to see that you read about that you think, no, my wife is not a better one because you're not promoting her. Even when she's promoting herself, you bring her down. <laughs> we have people who say that, I will not allow my wife to go and do her master's or go and do her doctorate. Why would a woman be doing this? But have you realized that behind every successful man, this beautiful woman who has grown up there is there mm -hmm. and is bringing glory for this successful mm -hmm. man. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So allow your wife, to be that virtuous woman you've been praying for. Mm. Groom her. Because that virtuous woman you are seeing there that you are envying, you wish was your wife, someone did the job. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do the job as a husband. Yeah. Wow. I really like the part that you mentioned about chasing because in our culture, 
that is the last thing that a husband is supposed to do and it's it's a common saying that uh, why would i keep on chasing a fish that's already in the aquarium you know you've definitely heard about this kind yeah. of saying when you were in the sea in the ocean yeah. i had to fend for you i did everything it takes now you're in the aquarium it's fine nobody really cares about you anymore mm -hmm. but that's where the chasing should actually start exactly wow. yeah really so deep. whatever you are chasing in the ocean you are chasing a, a, a after ghost or the spirit like a, something that is not existing because that mm -hmm. is not biblical mm -hmm. do you understand mm -hmm. when you have it huh, that's where you are cleaving that's where you are chasing mm -hmm. so chasing starts after marriage so stop chasing what you're not supposed to chase mm -hmm. that is not biblical that is not our scripture and that is what i say that the society takes what we have and mold it in a way that would even not be prudent for us, would not mm. help us in any way. Mm. And so if you don't know the word of God, you fall for anything. Mm. So don't say, I'm not chasing my wife. After all, I've seen everything. Yes, even after seeing everything, that is where the chasing starts. Make the best out of her and bring out the chaseable part. We have people who other men see their wives and be like, wow, this is your wife, if I get her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> the man has brought the chasing part in here. Mm. Equally, we have people who have gotten married and their wives, they are even shy to take them out because they have deemed. Mm -hmm. You remember the first scripture we read in Ephesians? He said, what you do is that you bring out the glory, the, the, the beauty in here with your words. Yes. Even your words can bring out that glow. Mm -hmm. So chase your wife. Yeah. Wow. Not your girlfriend, mm -hmm. not your fiance, not whoever, <laughs> your wife. Amen. And I really hope that husbands are, you know, listening to this and taking heed because it's so easy for some people to say, no, in marriage, my wife, she has become a bit, eh, yeah. she's neglecting herself. She's not like in the beginning. Especially and after so, giving birth. Exactly. <laughs> and so it now gives you a reason to go and look for something out there. But no, your responsibility is to be a cultivator. Mm. So what you're not seeing in your wife it means you have to cultivate and bring it out of her it's not for you to go and find it out there but with what you have in the house you are able to bring it like god has placed it in you mm. when building you as a man mm. when building you as a husband to the woman that you are with right now he has placed it in you you have everything that you need so do not feel like you're not equipped do not feel like oh, i'm not up for the job because you truly are and god will help you honor his word absolutely mm. absolutely and i think to wrap it up i will just talk about the husband being a father and a teacher mm. so yeah um when we are talking about the husband as a father i think what we we would think about is he being a father to his children mm. but that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about the husband being a father to the wife as well mm. now god is our father right the husband is in the position of god in a mar marital home so as i said he reflects christ in the home so the the father every quality that god as a father has the husband possesses it so now, right from the Garden of Aden, where marriage started, God brought Eve and presented Eve to Adam. Even though Adam just grabbed Eve when he saw it, but that is how it was. The father, which is Eve's father, brought Eve. Adam saw Eve and said, this is the woman that I want to marry. Mm. Now, in the normal world or in our culture, I don't know if there's a different culture, but every culture I've come to see, when a woman is being walked down the aisle, it is the father that presents the wife or the woman to the son, to the, sorry, to the husband. the husband. What it implicates is that God handed Eve to Adam. Now my father would hand me over to another father. What it means is that the responsibility, the role that my father was playing in my life as a daughter, He's handing me over to another man who equally has the capacity to play that role. So you treat your wife not as a child, but then you bring us out the daughter, father love in a marital home because you are supposed to continue what her father was doing, the role 
by providing, by caring, by training, by, by teaching, by nurturing, everything that a father was doing, you have to. So a, a, um, a lady or a woman in a marital home, always, almost every time, would want to find out, what do you think? What should I do? What should I? Sometimes you just sit down and be crying. Why? Because the daughter nature has come out <laughs> and you need a father to act as well. So as a husband, you don't just act like a father to your children, but a father to your wife. That is why, funny enough, a lot of marriages, the, the older it becomes, when you're getting to 10, no, to 15, 20 years, then the, the wives will start calling their husbands daddy. <laughs> because at the end of the day, they find that characteristics of a father in their husband. Mm. So one of the duty or how, what a wife wants to see in a husband, the role that they want to see is that father nature. That's nature that no matter what, if you're, if no matter what the child does, the father will bring them back to mm. him. The father will never say, you are no longer my child. Mm. No, that is how a husband is supposed to be. No matter what your wife does, you want to bring your wife back to you as a father mm. in your home. And then you are a teacher. Whatever your wife doesn't know, you are supposed to teach. Mm. So you don't have any excuse to say, my wife is not good in this. You are the head of the home, right? You are the leader, right? Teach her. Mm. If your wife doesn't know how to cook, you should have the capacity to cook. Teach her. <laughs> if your wife doesn't know how to clean, you should have the capacity to clean. Teach her. Mm. Because the question you should ask yourself as a husband, what would Christ do in this situation? If I was with Christ, you as a man, if you mess up, what would Christ do? Would he cast you away? If mm. yes, he can cast your wife away. Would he teach you what to do? If yes, they have to teach your wife. Mm. So you have to have patience beyond understanding. Forgiveness beyond understanding for your wife. Love beyond understanding mm. for your wife. Just like a father would have for the daughter or the child. Mm. So should you have. And be disciplined in every way. As a husband, be disciplined. Mm. We have a lot of men who are so indisciplined. Indisciplined in every way. To the extent that they will act like children. They will do the same thing that was wrong every day, every time, the same way, the same time, without thinking. So indisciplined that they will go out not thinking about their wife. The wife is pregnant. You go out. You don't think about, have they eaten? Have they done this? Have they taken their drugs? Have they done? You don't care. Some people's wives are pregnant. They don't even know, have you gone to antenatal? They don't even know what antenatal is. <laughs> they, don't, they don't care. That is not your Be disciplined to act in your role as a man. How you are. God has given you authority. Don't undermine your own authority mm. by being indisciplined. Be disciplined in every way. And our home will be perfect. Mm. So that is how I'll wrap up wow. the whole roles of the husband. Amen. Wow. Um, that was really a, a lot of food for thought and in the second part of this episode we're going to dive into the roles of wives but for now ella can we maybe conclude this episode with a word of prayer if you can pray for the husbands out there that are watching that you know they would just realize what god expects from them and the example that christ has outlined for them and start walking into that for prosperous marriages Sure. Thank you, Lord, for your word, giving us an undiluted word from you. Thank you for using us to bring out the knowledge you have in your word. Thank you for making us know that you have the template set out there for us. To every man who is watching me, desiring to be a husband, a kingdom man, or whoever that is a husband already, but didn't know, had no idea what you were expecting, the role he's supposed to play. I pray for grace for all these men. Father, there is nothing that we cannot do. If you have written it, it means you know we have the capacity to do it. And so every grace we need to be the husband that will be for our wives to honor you, that will be a praise point for our husband, for our wives, Lord, that they will see Christ in us, Lord. Father, grant us the grace. Grant every man watching the grace to be that person that they desire to be to reflect you in our home. 
every patience we need, every grace we need to love unconditionally, to forgive unconditionally. Grant it to us. Holy Spirit, never leave us because you have been asked to be our helper. We thank you that you help us always. And today you have helped us and given us the grace to take up our, our, our authority and leadership that you have made us in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. And let's see each other in the second part of this episode for the roles of wives. God bless.